been called a lot in my 23 years, but donkey of the day is a new one. Mm. <sighs> donkey of the day for Monday, May 24th goes to me. Leonard McKelvey. Uh, contrary to popular belief, this is not the first time I've given myself Donkey of the Day because Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I mean, I may be kind of biased towards certain people, but I, but I don't have any bias when it comes to myself. If I'm wrong, if something I do or say doesn't sit right with my spirit, I have to apologize and do better moving forward. And that's what I'm about to do right now. I want to apologize to Kwame Brown and Kwame Brown's family. I want to apologize to his father, Bill Brown, and, and, and the family of his father. See, last week on this radio, in my attempt to defend a Charleston, South Carolina-born brother like myself, uh, I revealed too much information about that man's family. And even though all that stuff is public record, some things just don't need to be said on the radio, and they definitely don't need to be said by me. When I look back you know, on the way I communicated that, I communicated it all wrong. And I unintentionally triggered trauma in a lot of folks I grew up with who I genuinely love. I'm sure I caused a lot of pain for not only Kwame Brown, but for his family, especially his family in my hometown of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. You know how I know? Because I spoke to a few of them. Uh, I've been on the phone this weekend with, with, with mothers of children and their children. Uh, salute to Shaliba and her daughter, Brianda. Brianda. I was on the phone with uh, sisters like uh, Wallet. Salute to Wallet. Oh, she cursed me out good. And, you know, I was apologizing for triggering them, causing them pain because I was casually discussing their family's trauma, man. And, and that's something that I have to stop doing. That's something that we all have to stop doing. I was talking to my sacred purpose coach, Yadi Alba, this weekend. She's like a spiritual therapist. I have her and my clinical therapist. And that's what we were talking about, how we casually discuss each other's traumas. I didn't even think about when I spoke on, you know, Kwame and his family, how many people were impacted by those things I was speaking on. I mean, that's that's generational. OK, I, I caused pain and unintentionally, unintentionally poked at people's wounds. OK, wounds that will probably never heal. And I can't take back those words, but I can't apologize. You know, I think oftentimes we, meaning black people, we fight each other with our demons, whether true or false. Whatever is the worst thing we know about a person, I think we I think we know about a person. We default to that. And that was not my intention. I was not in any way, shape or form trying to paint Kwame in a negative light. OK, that black man is not my op. He wasn't my op when I said it. In my mind, I'm defending that man, but I should have been defending him as Leonard Charlemagne the God McKelvey, the professional, and not Leonard Larry, whatever you want to call me from Monk's Corner, South Carolina, talking like I'm home in the town on why I believe they need to leave Kwame Brown alone. That was whack because the conversation didn't even have to go there. The conversation should have been about basketball. Yes, leave Kwame Brown alone because he achieved a goal and a dream that 1.3% of NCAA seniors will achieve and 0.03 percent of high school seniors you know how small a number that is and you know just that's just simply being drafted in the nba if you play 13 seasons and make 65 million dollars you're a success okay if you work 13 years anywhere and make that kind of money you a success so salute to that man the only expectations we have to live up to is our own that's why i always say success is subjective okay my views of success may be different than yours as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. But we didn't even get into that conversation because my mind automatically went to something that didn't that it didn't even have to go to. And doing that, I unintentionally caused trauma. And since I unintentionally caused trauma, I have to be intentional about causing healing. I'm not about to sit around and have beef with another black man for nothing. Trust me, as y'all know, I have a lot of real enemies who are gunning for me every day. Kwame Brown is not going to be one of them, okay? I totally understand why Kwame Brown was upset at me. I went low. That wasn't my intention. But in hindsight, it was low. And Kwame took it to the floor with me. And y'all be online so excited, ready to see black people go back and forth and tear each other down. I'm not doing that. I'm not going back and forth if I feel like I wronged somebody. I'm going to apologize. That's what I think a good man does. A good man apologizes for the mistakes, you know, that he made. But a great man corrects them. Hopefully, I get the opportunity to do that one day. But for now, I just apologize. And I'm not beefing with a black man who's born where I was born and has family where I'm from. There is nothing on this planet that I love more than God, my family, and Monk's Corner, South Carolina, the whole low country, the 843. Drop on the clues, bonds for the 843. Okay? So when I say I sincerely apologize to Kwame Brown and his family and the family of Bill Brown and Monk's Corner, I mean that. Only thing I'm responsible for is my energy and recognizing my own insanity. And Eckhart Tolle once said to recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence. I truly believe if trauma can be passed down through generations, then so can healing. Me, 
Lenard McKelvey, I have never claimed to be perfect. In fact, I'm far from it. I'm not going to always get it right. The same things people listen to me for is the same things they hate me for because I talk too much. I overshare. I overshare about myself. I overshare about others. And that has historically gotten me in trouble. But we are all works in progress. And one of the most healing things you can do is recognize where in your life you are your own poison. And last week I was poisoned to Kwame Brown, Bill Brown, and their families. For that, I sincerely apologize. Uh, please let Remy Ma give me Leonard McKelvey, Charlemagne the God, the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw, you stupid mother are you dumb? Yes, indeed. Donkey today is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamisoff. Don't be a donkey. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say the bull if you've been hurt in a construction accident. That's pound 250 from your cell and say the bull.